What's going on guys? Justin Fuller here at a Mazda of a 2021 Honda Accord Sport, specifically the SE model, new to the 2021 offerings. It's got leather interior, 19 inch wheels, a beautiful paint job, and a lot more to offer. Let's check it out now. All right guys, so when it comes to SE models, Honda's giving you a big hint. Typically an SE model means that next year, you're probably gonna see a big body style change. So when we're looking at this car, just keep in mind that it means that most likely next year, we're gonna see some big changes land in this vehicle. So let's hop on in and check out some things. So the first thing you've got on this vehicle is a 19 inch alloy wheel. It is painted black and silver, so a beautiful look to this car. As we move around the side, I will point out that you do have LED, not only daytime running lights, headlights, and your fog light controls are gonna be LED. So keep that in mind. As we move around the car, you will notice that you've got a nice black grill on the bottom with a nice chrome piece on top. So when you're looking at this front face of this car, it is a very sporty look to the vehicle. Now, as we're up top here, I wanna come across the hood and show you a couple things. One, this trapezoid that you can see right there, that is gonna be connected to your Honda sensing, so that is the camera. And then your radar is now gonna be a little bit better hidden inside this, so you can see it right down below the license plate bracket there. So that's where that is gonna live as far as using it for adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist. Now, as we move across the vehicle, I'll just point out that of course you saw the 19 inch alloy wheels. As we move up, you can see we've got these nice black mirrors here that are breakaway, so I can break them. So no worries there. Now on top of the car, you will notice that there is no moonroof. You would want to climb up to an EXL model if you're looking for that, but it does have leather interior. And we'll go over that in just a second. You've got this nice low profile look to this vehicle. So it is a very sporty looking vehicle. Now, obviously I would recommend getting it tinted because that will just go with this, but it does not come tinted from the manufacturer. Now, when we're looking at the back of the vehicle, it is of course badge sport and then specifically the SE. Now on the top, you'll see it does have a black deck lid spoiler and then it does have dual chrome tipped exhaust along the bottom, right? So a very nice look to this vehicle. You do, of course, have a backup camera. As I'll point out a couple more things, you do have a shark fin as far as your antenna, and it is blacked out additionally, too. So a solid looking car. It's got a nice trim, a nice look to it as far as the black, the red, and the finish of this vehicle. All right, guys, so let's talk about performance and what's underneath the hood of this 2021 Honda Accord Sport SE. So as we come in here, I will point out that you have a 1.5 liter turboed engine. You're getting 192 horsepower out of this, and it is heading down to a CVT transmission. From there, it's moving out to those 19 inch wheels so you can see i got things packed in here pretty tight with a little bit of space in the back i've got electronic brake distribution of course my windshield wiper fluid air coming in my engine up top i've got my battery which is nice and easily accessible which i always like in case you're gonna car audio or anything else to the vehicle uh, and then of course i've got my fuse box my air box right so tight fit but i do have a little bit of space along the back if i wanted to add anything to this car now, while we're at the front of the car, I wanna to talk to you about safety features and what the car haul has to offer, right? So as we looked earlier, I pointed out that of course it does have a camera up top to help you out as far as your adaptive cruise control and your lane keep assist. It'll keep you centered your lane. And of course it does have road departure mitigation, meaning if I start to drift off the side of the road, it'll give you an all up alert and shake the wheel, right? So you've got those features working for you. But additionally, you have a lot of other things working for you. The car is set up with ACE body structure. Now what that is, is, is advanced compatibility engineering, meaning it's designed to have crumple zones, to help drop the engine in the event of an accident so it doesn't get pushed into the cabin. And it's got all these different crinkle zones around the car to help protect what's inside your most valuables, your family, right? So know that you have that too. Now on top of that, you've got six airbags in this car. So you've got two in the front right here. You've got two full side airbags right there to come out of your pillars here. And then you've got full curtain airbags that run across the, 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 the full extent of the glass. Now these have rollover sensors and they come out from right here. And they're designed to where if I start to drive off the shoulder road, it will give me an audible alert, right? And then it will throw them open. So I don't necessarily have to get in a car wreck to help protect who's in the car if it's looking like I'm going to get in that wreck. So just some additional safety uh, features to be aware of if you're looking at this bar, things that you have working to your advantage. All right guys, so here I am at the back of the Honda Accord. And this is typically where I would make some weird cheesy comment about how many bodies you can fit in the back and blah 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 blah. Just skip all that and get to the point. Do I've got enough space to throw things back there? Absolutely I do. So as you move in here, I could easily throw these seats down. I've got a 60-40 split back there, which you may or may not be able to see. And then of course I've got plenty of space to move inside of here. Now, down below, I do have my trunk accessories, right? So I've got my full diameter spare, 
along with my jack and my accessories. And then I've got this funnel right here, which I will pop out and explain just here in a second. So as we move around the side, I wanna point out some things here. This is connected to my door lock, so if the doors are unlocked, I can pop it open. What this is for is if I ran out of gas, you can see this is a valve right here, so it's capless. I would need to stick this in here so that I could pour gas in, right? So it's not the world's tiniest beer bong. It's not the cutest beer bong. There's your generic statement in a bad joke, right? This is designed to help you out in the event that you do run out of gas and you have to fill it up, right? Because chances are you're probably not gonna have a gas cap with you. So that's what the purpose of this is. All right guys, so now that I got some cheesy jokes out of the way, let's talk about performance and let's also hop in the backseat of this car. So this car runs roughly at $29,675 as far as the MSRP of the car goes. You're getting 29 in the city as far as your gas mileage goes and 35 on the highway. So you're getting pretty good gas mileage out of that 1.5 liter turboed engine with that CVT transmission. So let's hop on in the second row and see what it feels like. All right, so here I am sitting in the second row of this vehicle and I've got plenty of space to work with. So you can see I've got quite a fit here. So I'm sitting behind what I would set up for myself as a six footer. So with the seat pushed quite a bit back, I've got plenty of room in this car. Now, if you come on inside the car with me, I will point out that you have a beautiful leather interior on in this car. So I've got black leather interior with some uh, preparation here, and then a beautiful stitching job on this specific vehicle. Now, as we turn around, you will notice that I've got two USBs back here. So I've got one here and one here. It's so a little bit different setup. And you can see that I've got two more USBs right up there. So I've got four USBs in this car. So really one for each passenger. I've got a little bit of additional storage here, and then your pockets back here and some additional storage in the doors. So a fantastic fit for second row passengers in this vehicle. So the SE is really a sweet combination between a Sport and an EXL model. So as we come into the seating arrangement here, I will point out that you have a powered driver's side seat and a powered passenger seat. So down here, not only can I can adjust the front, the back, the up, the downs, my backrest, but I also have lower lumbar support. And then on my other side of a four-way powered seat, meaning I can adjust front and back, and of course my backrest. So it's a really nice combo that you would typically have to climb to that EXL model to get. Not only are the front seats powered, but additionally you have heated seats in the front. So not only can I control this from my driver's side, but additionally I have it from my passenger side too. So let's talk about some of the easy access buttons I have. And I'm gonna start you over on the door. Of course I have my mirror controls, so left and right, and then I can adjust on the pad. My door locks, window locks, and then of course my uh, all my controls for my windows. Auto up and down, one touch on my driver and passenger side, so one touch will send it up or down. Now, of course, if I want to access the trunk, I can, of course, pop the button here, or I can go off the key fob, or it does have keyless access to walk up and just touch it. And then down here, I can, of course, pop my hood right here additionally, too. So easy to access a lot of these. You'll notice there isn't anything for the gas cap because it is, of course, connected to the door locks of the car. Now, you've got a few buttons that are right here, and I'll point them out really quickly. This will allow me to toggle through my, uh, my trip computer, so if I do that, you'll notice down here that it'll toggle through my different options, and then I can affect the brightness with this toggle right here, so you can see me adjusting it. Now, down below that, this is going to access to uh, some of my Honda sensing features. So when I press this button, you're going to see this pop up on in this screen up here. And I've got a couple different options here. My road departure mitigation system, which you could see. Of course, my collision mitigation braking system also, right? So just to explain kind of what these two are, my collision mitigation braking system is in the event that it's looking like I'm going to get an accident the auto, and I'm going to rear end somebody, the car will give me an audible alert, then it will actually start to apply the brakes to help to prevent the accident. So that is what this feature is right here. Now above that, my road departure mitigation, if it's looking like I'm starting to drive off the shoulder of the road, it'll give me an audible alert and then shake the wheel to say, hey, wake up, pay attention. Maybe you're getting drowsy. So that's what these two features are right here. Now, when it comes to the steering wheel, not a lot has changed on the left side of the steering wheel. So all these buttons should be fairly familiar if you're uh, familiar with Hondas in general, right? So my home button will allow me to scroll up and toggle through this menu screen that I have up here. So it's a digital on the left side, and then I've got a little bit more of an analog look on the right side. So it's kind of a nice blend of being able to access different menus on this over here. All right, so just to walk you through some of the different options that you have on this screen. So when I toggle down here, I can go to a general tachometer, which you see right here. Of course, I can go to range and fuel. So this gives me some average fuel consumption, you know, how many miles in this tank of gas, that sort of thing. Uh, as I continue down here, speed and time related to driving habits. So this will just give you a little bit more information on your driving abilities. Audio, so this is gonna pull up anything that I'm listening to or any options that I have. And what's cool about this is that I can press up and down and it'll allow me to select any of these different options as far as audio and what I wanna to listen to. So it makes life a lot easier as far as selecting without having to look over at the touchscreen and mess with anything over there. Now your phone, obviously if you connect up via Bluetooth, you'll give some options here as far as placing calls and whatnot. Traffic signs is a really cool feature. What it does is it uses this camera right up here that's in here to detect traffic signs in front of you and then it'll throw them up right on this square right here. So it'll let you know if you go through a work zone, it'll throw up and let you know, hey, this is actually what the, uh, you know, the speed limit is so that you don't get yourself in trouble. So that's what the traffic signs is used for there. 
Now, as I continue down here, tra driver support you already just saw. This would be related to my Honda sensing features as far as what I'm doing. And then the driver attention monitor. If I'm not touching the steering wheel that much or the gas or the brake, because maybe I'm using adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist, at a point it's gonna start to alert me just to make sure that I'm not getting drowsy. So it's just really looking for you to be responsive and still using the vehicle accordingly. Now your re rear seat belt reminder, this is actually a new feature uh, that's in the 2021 Accord. So in the event that somebody doesn't throw their seatbelt on in the back, it's gonna give you this reminder to let you know, hey, they haven't buckled up. So if you got kids and you got that one kiddo who will say yes, they did, but maybe they unbuckle it or do whatever, you can keep an eye on what's going on back there. Now maintenance will give you your oil life right here. And then once you get down to 15%, it'll start throwing you codes, A1, A2, or B1 or B2. And then you can check that and know exactly what they're gonna offer you when you head into the dealership or if you wanna go somewhere else. Safety support is what we talked about earlier. This is gonna be related to your Honda sensing features as far as making sure that they're on so I can toggle through here and see if either one of those features is on, right? And then my warnings this is like if I had the door open or the trunk open or anything like that, it would uh, alert me. So right now I don't have my seatbelt on, it's giving me an uh, alert, right? So easy enough to understand as far as the menu screen that you can use when you're using this right side over here. So the home button and then you can toggle through and select what you want by pressing down on it. We've got volume controls here, Bluetooth controls, uh, you know, to answer a call, hang up call and use voice command. This will also play a role if you're using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in this vehicle. Now on the right side, they've changed things up just a little bit, but I do kind of like it. It's a little bit more simple. So if I'm using my cruise control, I would just get up to my speed and press this. Once I do, you'll see that feature come on and it'll hold your speed. I can then increase the speed with the plus symbol or minus the speed. If I want to use my adaptive cruise control, I can now set the distance that keeps between me and the cars in front of me using this button right here. So you can see the boxes appear and disappear. Right, so that's gonna be your adapter cruise control. Now lane keep assist, I would just press this button right here and then you'll see this pop on. Those will stay hollowed out until you get going over 45 miles an hour and then they will fill in solid once the camera is now reading the lines on the road. So just keep that in mind, it is a camera. So if it's raining horrifically and you have your windshield wipers on, that's actually gonna disable this function. And just be aware that, hey, if it's a road that's been repaved 38 times, this feature probably isn't gonna work as well. So just something to be aware of. Now up here, I've got paddle shifters on this car since it is a sport model, so I can upshift and downshift the car accordingly. So it just gives me a little bit more control over the car as far as the shifting points. Now my light controls are over here on the left side. I've got auto on off headlights, of course, and then my fog light controls are right down below. Uh, and then on the other side, I've got my windshield wiper controls. So just pull down to set them, and then they are intermittent so I can affect right here, which is kind of nice. This is an LX model, so you don't always see, or excuse me, this is a sport model, so you don't always see all of these functions coming in. Some of these are getting pulled across from that EXL model. Now, as we move across over to the dash, I'll point out your touchscreen. So you've got a nice looking touchscreen. This hasn't changed much other than it's in all of the models now. So even if you're looking at the base model, you would get the same touchscreen. Other than that though, a lot of these features are gonna be the same from the previous year. As far as connecting of a phone, it's not hard to do. All you gotta do, hit connect phone, you know, connect new device, and then it'll give you the ability to search for that device. Now, make sure your Bluetooth is turned on and then it'll give you any access to any phones that might be available. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that my phone is on and I'm gonna make sure that my Bluetooth is turned on here. And so once we do that, we'll make sure we're good to go. So I've got my Bluetooth on on my phone. So let's go ahead and take a look and see if we can find my phone here. So I'm now searching on my phone to see if I can find it. And it's actually right there. You can see hands-free link. So if I select the hands-free link option, that will allow me to connect my car uh, and my phone up to each other. So we're gonna go ahead and connect those up. I'm gonna enable this. What this is, is this is asking an event of collision uh, and the airbags deploy, Honda can call down to you. If you don't answer, they can call 911 for you. This is a 100% free. Honda Link Assist, you should absolutely take advantage of this and turn this on. From there, it's gonna ask you if you wanna connect audio and phone, which I do, so I can listen to my audio and I can receive my phone calls. From there, it'll just say, hey, there may be some additional prompts on your phone, which I do have just one saying, hey, would you like to allow it to send messages your way? Once I've done that, I now have access to this so I can get to my contacts, I can get to my recent calls, I can get to all kinds of different things related to what's going on here. So easy enough to use once you've got this all connected up. Now, this is also gonna play a role as far as using uh, you know, Bluetooth audio. So I would be able to jump over to this and then if I was you know, listening to anything, I could obviously hit play and continue on with what I'm doing. Or if I'm listening and I wanna to listen to Spotify, I could obviously pull that up, uh, get it up and running. And then once I do, just hit play and there you go. Now I've got some music playing in the car uh, through my phone wirelessly. So easy enough to understand. And then of course, I just have to make sure my audio is turned up. All right, so easy to understand as far as that goes. Now, as far as settings goes, a lot of different things in here that you can play with, of course. 
Uh, I just like to point out some of the basic features though. If you go down here to vehicle, this is where you can find like door lock and window setups and things of that nature. Um, so I just always like to point that out. Door and window is right here. When you access this, if you wanna get your door locks, right now the car is set when I hit 10 miles an hour to automatically lock the doors. I can change those features right here. So if I wanna change it when I shift to park it automatically lock or I can turn it completely off. And then if I scroll down to auto door unlock, this is when I'm getting out of the car. So when I open my driver's side door, it then unlocks our main doors of the car. So I can change that to some different options here too, just depending on what I want. So if I take a little bit longer to get going and the kids wanna hop out and run in the house, I might wanna change this to where it unlocks those doors for them. So just be aware that there are a couple of features in here that you can play with. Walkway auto lock is probably one of the coolest features that is not on by default. If I turn that on, what it means is when I get out of the car, when I get 10 feet from the car, if the key is in my pocket and it detects that, it will automatically lock the doors of the car. So if you get halfway to the grocery store and you realize your laptop's in the car and you're not sure if you locked it, you don't have to panic and run back out there. Just make sure your walkway auto lock is always turned on and it'll automatically lock the doors for you. So those are kind of brief settings that I'll touch on. FM, I won't say too much about this other than it's easy to understand. You can scroll through and find what you want and of course select it. AM is gonna be the exact same. Uh, your trip computer, I can pull up that same information that I got to over here on the dash. It's just a different place to view it if I'm on a long trip and I wanna see it more visibly or my passengers do. SMS text function just means it'll read my text aloud to me and occasionally it'll give me the ability to, um, of course, um, you know, get some additional answers back. Now with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, I have those same features available to you and I would be able to voice command and say what I want back, right? So just some different ways to attack the same feature. USBs, we talked about that earlier. I've got two USBs down here and two in the back. Of course, I can plug in a thumb drive if I wanna to listen to music that way, or I can plug my phone in here and go through Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to have access to music, messages, navigation, things of that nature. If you have questions about that, uh, there are plenty of videos out there, but just to give you the brief rundown, I'll pull it up here in a second and show you what it looks like. All right, so USBs, we talked about AM, FM, same thing. Honda Link, you do have a compass in this car. I'm glad they brought that back. A lot of people ask about compasses regularly. You do have a compass now. System updates and of course a clock. Clock is easy to understand. I can change this and customize this background. I can even add my own image. All I would have to do is put a USB in here with an image on it and then go from here and select and then go to you know my typefaces and then you know I can make these changes, right? So I wanna add a new wallpaper and then I would do so with the USB. It would allow me to pull up that additional option, right? So it gives you an idea. You want a JPEG or BMP file. Uh, they can actually be pretty big, guys. I've made some pretty big images and been able to throw them up on here. So let's talk about Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is connect your phone through the USB, which I've already done to my car. Once I've done that, it's gonna pull up and start you know, activating. Once I've done that, you'll see this light up either showing Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Now, once it's done so, I'll then be able to select this and I'll have a lot of different options available to me. So I typically use Google Maps, so it immediately pulls this up. It's got some of my favorites saved in my previous journeys. Then I can jump over here into some of my apps. I typically use Spotify quite a bit. And what I love about this is you can actually customize this too, right? So if there's different things that I use a little bit more than others, if I press and hold, what it'll actually do is it'll, app, it'll launch the app. And then from here, I can start moving stuff around. So if I wanna make sure that I have certain features uh, always lifted up top, I can absolutely do so. All I've gotta do is make sure that I have them in the places that I want. And then once I've done that, what it's gonna require me to do is exit out of this screen and then re-enter it. And once I've done that, so I can unplug and plug it back in, it'll readjust these for me. So just be aware that you can absolutely do that. Now, while I'm using this, I will point out that of course I do have the voice command option. Um, so as far as you know, pulling up navigation and doing anything like that, I can use it from there. Uh, and then additionally, I can use it from anywhere else, right? So as far as sending texts, making phone calls and whatnot, right? And what's cool is that it also picks up. You can see that I use a pixel. Uh, and then, oh, I didn't even talk about this earlier, but we'll talk about this. If I wanna move this around and customize it all I absolutely can all I've got to do is press and hold down on that screen and I can start moving stuff to where I want it so if there's something over here that I typically use a lot I can move this over to this additional screen here and it'll just bump stuff around so I can put it wherever I want so it's just kind of nice that you can add these in and customize a little bit and then hit done to hold the screen right so easy enough uh, as far as Android Auto um, let's take a second here and just I'll remind you that there are several apps that work with this so as far as those apps go I'll throw something up on the screen here and that way you can see you know 15 of the most popular apps that people have, whether it be related to sports, podcasts, uh, books on tape, uh, you know, just anything, music, uh, and then of course navigation. So you can check all those out and see if there's anything that applies to you. Of course, I would highly recommend if you're looking for a car to have this because this eliminates the need for navigation and then paying for those updates and yada, 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 and everything that comes along with that. That's just data technology. This is what you should be using. So I have access to, you know, my Google Maps. I have access to Waze. I have access to Apple Maps. I can pull up weather, uh, you know, just general things that I would like to do with my phone in the car without picking it up and having to focus on it and take my focus away from the road. So that's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, just so you have a general understanding for how these features work. 
So let's talk about the shifter and a few of the features that you see down here. So quickly, I can just show you that of course I can shift through here, right? I've got my classic shifter that I use. And then down here, I've got some of my eco and my sport modes, right? So if I engage this, you're gonna see a green leaf appear right up here to let you know. Or, or if I flip over to the sport mode, uh, it's gonna light up everything red over here in the corner so you can see it, right? And you're gonna see sport mode in the middle there, right? So these kind of work uh, the opposite of each other. So sport mode is gonna make me rev at a higher RPM, but give me a little bit more get up and go. Whereas eco mode, if I use that, is gonna uh, you know take away that get up and go, but it's gonna give me better gas mileage out of the car. So these are kind of working against each other, uh, depending on what I'm trying to accomplish. If I'm taking a long trip, maybe I wanna use this. If I'm just driving around town and I wanna have a little bit of fun, maybe I wanna use this. Now below that is my idle start stop, which I can turn off, but I always have to hit this button every time to disengage it. Now what this is, is if I come up to a stop at a light, uh, it can turn off the engine of the car while leaving the electronics and the AC on to help save for gas mileage, right? Now below that is my uh, emergency brake. So to set it, push it down on the brake and lift up to set it. Once I do so, it'll say brake right here. You'll see a little red line here. So just so you know what that is. And of course it'll light up the LED and then I can press down to release it. Below that is my brake hold button. If I have this button engaged, how this works is, sorry if I'm shaking a little bit, let me throw my seatbelt on here and I'll show you because you gotta have your seatbelt on to use this button. If the car is in drive, right? So now I'm in drive and I hit the brake hold button. Right, so it'll say brake hold and it'll say holding, right? So this means that I can let my foot off the gas or brake, right? So I'm not touching anything while the car's in drive and we're not moving, right? So the minute I touch the gas, it's gonna release that hold button. I move forward. So if I'm stopping the traffic, I come to another stop. Once I come to a complete stop, it hits hold again and says it, I can release my foot. So it's a convenience features what this is. So if I'm stopping the traffic or if I'm in like a drive through line, this is where this would come into play. So that's what this is as far as the breakdown here. One other thing I wanna show you is if I throw it in reverse, it'll obviously pull up my backup camera. So you can see that I've got three different views down here. So a wide angle, a normal view, and then one aim straight down. So you can see my back bumper right there. Uh, so it's great for backing up to another car, parallel parking, anything like that. I can see my curb right there next to me, right? So I'm parked up next to a curb. You can see right here. So if I was backing in or anything like that, I'd be able to see. Uh, so just know that you have these three views available to you. This is about six feet from your car. And then this is going to be for parallel parking. That's about two and a half feet from your car. And you can see that on all of them, right? So this one's the, the best example, six inches, uh, and then about two and a half feet from your car, right? So this way, if I'm backing up to a bush, a car, a Jeep, anything like that, uh, this Jeep right here, uh, I know that I would need to leave space here if we we're parallel parking. So it just gives me a good indication. I've got three different views to work from right here. All right, guys, so that's the 2021 Honda Accord Sport SE. I hope this review was as fun as this sweet ass disco shirt I found. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about a couple quick changes here that the 2020 to 21 Accord has made. So first thing to know, there are no more manual transmissions. If you were ever looking for one, can't get one anymore. You gotta go old school, right? Uh, they did change the grill, so you've got a wider grill now. You do have smaller fog lights available in the car, depending on the trim level you're getting. If you're in that higher end, they do have these new LED headlights, so something to be aware of. If you're thinking, hey, I might wanna jump up into a 21 and then start playing with my trims. Um, if you're thinking about going down to the LX model, they've actually made a lot of changes uh, to the Accord as far as the 2021. The LX now has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It has an eight inch touchscreen. It has a rear seatbelt reminder, which this car also has. And then it has 17 inch wheels with 192 horsepower, 1.5 liter turbo. Now know that this car is available in that 1.5 liter turbo and that Sport 2.0 liter. So depending on what you're gonna do, you have some engine options available to you in this car. And that's the same uh, in 2020 and 21, right? So just wanna make sure everyone's aware. Uh, engine wise, you have a lot of the same features, but exterior wise, they have made some changes. Now talking about an SE, one last thing I wanna remind you that I said at the beginning of the video was that whenever there's an SE, that means the next year there's gonna be a big body style change. That is the thing that Honda always seems to do. So be aware of that if you're buying this car and then you're thinking, whoa, there's gonna be this big change next year. What's gonna happen? Know that yes, there most likely will be a big change. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Do me a couple things. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. I hope you'll like the video and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Even if it's about this ridiculous shirt that I absolutely love. You can do that, it's okay. Other than that, appreciate it guys. Later!